farther north than what George is. If you need to travel Interstate 64 today, it is open, but be careful. The road is very slick. Well, one of the busiest places today certainly will be the grocery store. Many have restocked, and they're bracing for the onslaught of customers. And that's where we find Wave 3 News reporter Derek Jones this Saturday morning. First in line, right, Derek? You, I tell you, I'm going Krogering today because they say it at about 9 o'clock. When the sun's up, they expect this place to be somewhat of a madhouse as folks try to get their lives back in order, their cupboards filled, and of course that refrigerator that we all love so much with a little more substance inside. This is the Kroger on Bardstown Road. It was the first night they stayed open all night last night. It's a 24-hour Kroger, and they didn't have the staff early in the week to do it, but they, they're trying to get their wheels started again, and today they decided to uh, go back 24 hours, and they've been stocking their shelves in anticipation of an expected large crowd. Some of the staff have been gathering here in order to prepare themselves for the crowd, and particularly Sue Haskin. I looked back on the shelves, and I didn't see any chicken, so I know things are getting back together, but still some items insisting. What, what are you doing? We're expecting our meat deliveries today, and we're expecting things to really roll in here and be normal starting today and, and really be back in business full swing. So you're hoping that the chicken comes in, obviously, with chicken and some ground beef and maybe some other things we saw on the dairy side? Cheeses and, and uh, orange juices and things like that. But we've stayed in, in business almost the entire time with milk and bread and a uh, period of time we didn't have eggs, but we're back in business on those particular staples. I see. What has this storm done to you and your business? I mean, how was it, particularly Tuesday and Wednesday, when you were really pressed against the wall, no trucks were coming in, did you had to be creative? We had to be very creative. Uh, we had, first of all, we had to staff the store, and the first day of the storm, uh, my one co-manager, Steve Smith, went to all ends of Louisville to get people in to staff the store. He drove them he himself drove, to pick them up? He drove people in, myself included. Uh, he, he brought us all in, and he would go in shifts and, and, and get people, depending on how busy we got and how many people we could get to the store itself. Mm -hmm. uh, Monday, we ran with, with eight employees, where we normally would have 75, and uh, four of those were management. So. Uh, we're not as familiar with all the specifics of checking and things like that. Like <laughs> you had to do with the, yeah, yes. the labor. Yes. Yes. Right. Let me ask you another question. There's other groups, government groups, and of course everybody around tries to assess how they reacted during this disaster so they can better uh, provide services again if in fact that we were to experience something like this. What are you guys going to do in terms of looking how things went and trying to improve the th some things to uh, maybe do a little bit better job for yourselves next uh, storm? Difficult. For, for me to say, I feel like we, we did everything we could. Uh, we did have to close early. Um, we felt like we needed to do that for safety reasons for our employees. Um, we, I felt like we did everything we possibly could to get things, keep things rolling. All right, and I'm sure a lot of people appreciate it too, because I know you were open, we even though a lot of people them closed. Too. We appreciate their patience, and we appreciate their business, not only this, this week, but all through the year. All right, Sue Haskin, thanks a lot. From the Bartstown Road, Kroger Q, gearing up for a big day as folks try to get back up and running after Winter Storm 94. Back to you. Hey, Derek, I know the parking lot of that particular Kroger is small to begin with. Is there enough parking out there today? Um, she is concerned a little bit about that, but they've tried to get even more out on yesterday uh, back on the back side of the lot so folks will have more places to park. And, of course, Bartstown Road is beginning to clear out just a bit, so maybe if this one fills up, then they can use the anterior side of the, uh, the road to uh, park their cars. Okay, thanks a lot, Derek. Looks like now is the time to get out there and go to the grocery store. Yeah. Thank you, Derek. The uh, slick roads are still canceling lots of events, and before we show you closings, let me tell you that uh, because of mail delays, anyone who works through manpower temporary services, and there are about 2,000 people who match that description, can pick up their checks today at the Watterson Tower office between 10 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon. That's at 1930 Bishop Lane Suite, 133. And now we'll read the list of the uh, rest of the cancellations, and let's see what we've got here. The following for Jefferson County Board of Education have been canceled. The Auction Issues Seminar and the Jefferson County Debate League. Also, the Binet School Camp Advanced Program Testing and SAT Testing for Atherton and Wagner High Schools. More here, uh, Capital Holding Academic Challenge Tournament and all activities at the Geens Professional Development Academy. Youth Basketball League of the First Baptist Church, J-Town, all games are canceled. Whitney Young Scholars Education Program is canceled for today. Iroquois High School Open House, Lincoln Heritage Council Scoutorama kickoff has been postponed until 1:29. Sports Club programs at county schools, the JCC State Real Estate Licensing Exam, and the Black Achievers Meeting all canceled for today.
Temple Shalom Sabbath services and religious school closed for the weekend. Clarksville Little Theater, all performances have been canceled. Shelby County Flea Market closed all weekend. Volunteers of America Auto Auction has been rescheduled for the 5th of February. Long Run Baptist Association Youth Basketball League, Pro Bowl II Youth Leagues, and the Prelude Preschool Registration all canceled for today. The AA Area Assembly, South Oldham Little League Baseball and South Ball Sign-Ups, boy, it'd be nice to play a little baseball today, and Lincoln Jamboree all closed for today. Central Texas College All Classes, the DePaul School, E-Town Community College, and Jefferson Community College. St. Catherine College, Jewish Community Center Intramural Basketball Program at St. Francis in Goshen. Trash Force Recycling Center in New Albany is closed all weekend. Catholic Charities Operation Rice Bowl Reception is canceled. Ohio Valley Education Cooperative Project Discovery Training, a death to sure and synagogue Sabbath services are canceled for today. St. Matthias Church, no masses this weekend, and the Learning Network is closed. And basketball fans, you'll be happy to know that the UofL Southern Miss game is on for today, but there's going to be a lot going on at Freedom Hall today. They also have the Sport Boat and Vacation Show and the Entrepreneur Expo today, so get out there early and get a parking space. They are going to have an old-timers basketball game at 10.30 this morning, so you'll be entertained if you get to Freedom Hall early today. And we're going to take a break now at 12 minutes after 7 o'clock. We'll be back with this special edition of Wave 3 Sunrise. snow piled on them and if they had diesel engines some of that diesel had gelled and so the vehicles had to be warmed up and cleared off before they could move out for the big job of helping transport people and helping clear us out of the winter storm this year our problems uh, with the snow were compounded with the uh, record cold temperatures on Tuesday night by day three of the winter storm Kentucky had recorded five deaths we had another one last night in Muhlenberg County when an elderly man froze to death at his home. When the mercury plunged to 22 degrees below zero, a Louisville woman also froze in her home. 89-year-old Thelman Beatty was found uh, dead in her kitchen near a space heater. Police say that they could see the breath, their own breath, in her apartment. Another Louisville man died at his house. 71-year-old Jack Heiberger died of hypothermia. Heiberger was found by a neighbor. During storms like this, we can't stress enough that you should, if you can, check on your neighbors and especially check on the elderly. With the uh, bitter cold, the Ohio River iced over, creating a beautiful sight with dangerous possibilities. Tuesday night's record temperatures caused a layer of ice from shore to shore. It was a picturesque scene. Emergency personnel warned everybody to stay off the river or they might possibly drown. Well, Craig Edwards joins us next with the forecast plus a traffic update as our special edition of Wave 3 News continues. No, decided to get a first-hand look at the road conditions. We had heard there were dozens of vehicles abandoned on the Snyder Freeway alone. So that's where she headed to get her own count. All right, right now we're on 65 southbound and we do see some emergency vehicles that look like they're helping out uh, one stranded motorist. Chances are they'll be back on the road pretty soon. But we're heading down to Gene Snyder Freeway because we understand that there are more than 85 cars alone on the freeway stalled. We'll let you know when we get there. There, um, there's a little traffic on the road. There are three or four cars behind me, a truck up in front of me. Um, looks like I've got a van coming up to our left, Bob, if you can get that. Uh, pulling another car. And you can tell by the way we're bouncing around, folks, that this is no smooth path that's been scraped out here. He's pulling a boat. <laughs> He's heading to warmer climates. I don't blame him. We finally come across our first uh, stalled vehicles right here around Beulah Church Road. Um, we've got one back here, which is pretty much covered up, and it looks like we've got several in the median and on the side of the road up here. Here they are. This is what the cars that are still out here on the Gene Snyder look like. They are really buried in the snow. This one's completely off in the median. And as you can see, the traffic is still coming, so people are making it, but uh, this car's going to be stuck for a while. Take a look at how deep this is, folks. 
on the sides of the road. I mean, it's up to my knees. That's how bad it is where the, uh, where the plows have come through. So if you go off the road here on the Gene Snyder or any of the interstates, you're going to be in a world of hurt. It's best to stay at home. That's it from the Gene Snyder. Here comes the rest of the traffic. Okay, and a reminder that uh, many of the reports you're looking at this morning were recorded earlier in the week. In fact, some of the things we're showing you this morning uh, we uh, thought were some of the better reports that we had and also some things that didn't quite get on the air because we had so much to convey during the week. Well, we'll be back with more on Winter Storm 94, including a look at how emergencies were handled. from that closure on 64 eastbound at the collision and the collision on 65 south. If you can, try to use the 2nd Street Bridge. That's Wave Country traffic. Hugh? Okay, and Catherine, I know you can't talk and listen at the same time. While you were talking, uh, we just heard that uh, northbound 65 at the Kennedy Bridge is now also uh, being blocked by an accident. So thank you very much, Catherine. Okay, even though it caused some major problems, you have to admit that the snow is very pretty. And if you get the chance to get out and enjoy yourself, the white stuff can be a lot of fun, as Nell Taylor shows us. Come on, they're sweaty. Big brothers. Days like this make them absolutely intolerable, especially if you're a little sister. This Jeffersonville snowball fight sets the scene, but the older people were, the more creative they were about how they enjoyed the snow. Park joggers were replaced with cross-country skiers. All you, all you need is a little bit of snow. This is more than I asked for. <laughs> Bardstown Road was a challenge to cars, but walkers found it a breeze. So did this family. They were just waiting for this day, a test for their snowmobiles. And we usually ride in Wisconsin and stuff. Matter of fact, we had them all loaded up. And my husband was leaving for Wisconsin Wednesday. Looks like we have enough snow here. We don't have to go. Tell the Ryans if you need to hitch a ride, they've got a corral of snowmobiles. And this man picked a more traditional way to get through the deep drift, snowshoes. Oh, this is great. Seldom I get to pull my toys out in Louisville. Most folks use their feet to get around. And of course, so did the dog. Look at this guy. His name is Omer. Those seven-inch legs weren't bothered a bit by the 15-inch snow. And this man says his best friend has been out in it all day. They're like children. They love it. It's playtime. Even missions of mercy were turned into fun. These girls were going to dig a friend's car out of the snow, but they turned it into recess. <laughs> and in all this activity, there were still some folks who had their priorities straight. Now, I made some pizza for some friends of mine. Oh, so you guys we're are going to watch movies and eat pizza. <laughs> for some folks, this gorgeous snow is a pleasure best enjoyed from behind closed doors. In Louisville, Nell Taylor, Wave 3 News. Incredible. That is a beautiful sight out there, and uh, Craig, yesterday morning we had uh, diamond dust or... Um, Certainly did. Ice, ice fog, needle, yeah. uh, ice needles, that's, mm -hmm. that's what it's called, which is really, it's pretty rare, isn't it? It is, it's rare for us, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you need those temperatures down there very cold, as they obviously were yesterday morning. You need enough moisture in the air to uh, get those to start to form, and actually, if you did not get a chance to see it yesterday, it turns out to look like... Uh, just little sparkles out in the air, um, and they're all around. And it's somebody nice. told me it looks like the uh, effect that you get right before a migraine headache. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I don't I get migraine that. headaches. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, uh, well, that's different. I, I got out on Monday. As you know, I didn't get out of my subdivision on Monday because <laughs> you, my good buddy Craig, came in and filled in for me Monday morning. <laughs> my car is still over the embankment, and mm -hmm. I still have to dig it out and get it back up on the road. Um, but since I was stuck at home, um, I got the 35 millimeter camera out and tromped around for a while and got some pictures. And uh, if anybody can develop them at this point, I'd right. like to get them back, maybe show them on the you air. You know, I, I think it's also uh, important to note that there are still several businesses that are closed mm -hmm. uh, that have not opened all week long. And perhaps they'll get the chance to open up later today, or perhaps some of them will wait until Monday. But uh, th that's still, uh, it's best to call ahead before you start taking off on the roadways. Make sure that where you're going today is going to be open because there still are some businesses that have not opened. Some last minute information coming in on Shelbyville Road. There's a water main break. Uh, it's between Hurstburn Lane and the Watterson Expressway, right about where the Shelby campus is of the University of Louisville. A water main break there, so that's going to slow things down on Shelbyville Road. Uh, how was your drive in this morning? Drive in this morning was not too bad, uh, but I did note a couple of things that were different. I've, I've been out driving around for the past couple of days and have been able to get in and out. However, some of the intersections this morning that uh, I've been able to pass through very easily have ice on them this morning. I put on the brakes in one spot, slid through the intersection. 
car had been coming the other way, I would have been in big trouble, but luckily it was clear. So keep that in mind this morning. Some of the, the areas that you've been able to drive through over the past couple of days have frozen over again, and it's ice this time. It's not just snow, and there's just not a lot you can do in that. When Dick Bartlett was leaving here, he uh, gave me a phone number, and he said to put this phone number on the air because the Visiting Nurses Association is trying to uh, get some people who have four-wheel drive units to uh, volunteer them. The Visiting Nurses Association uh, wants to be able to get around and visit their patients, so if you have a four-wheel drive, the VNA would like to hear from you. The phone number there is 584-2456, 584-2456, if uh, you and your four-wheel drive unit can help out the Visiting Nurse Association. And uh, speaking of cars and speaking of getting around, you've probably seen this story, but we'll show it to you again. Even though it caused some major problems, you have to admit the snow is very pretty. And if you have a chance to get out and enjoy yourself uh, and play in the snow, go ahead and do it. A few brave souls ventured out during this week, and when it comes to uh, making things, one guy said he was tired of making snowmen. What he wanted to make was his own Corvette. Take a look at this. Uh, this is over in New Albany. This, guy, this is not a real car. This <laughs> is made out of snow. I talked to this guy on the phone the other day. He said he always wanted... I'm want a Corvette fan, waiting for summer to, to show up. And uh, I sold a Corvette uh, last August, and, and uh, the new ones are too expensive, so I decided to make my own. And make his own he did, and it is a beauty, too, complete with the for sale sign. But... I talked to him uh, again yesterday, and he said that it looks like a, a slushy mess <laughs> right now. <laughs> Hasn't lasted in the, the no. sunshine. Good thing he got some pictures of it. That guy could probably head on down to Bowling Green, pick up a job down there, That's make right. real ones. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe design one. They're getting ready to open up the uh, new museum down there, which will be a lot of fun, too, for Corvettes. Yeah, maybe they can put a picture of the uh, snow Corvette yeah. in there. Well, we're glad that you are able to join us this morning for this special edition of Wave 3 News. Uh, the Today Show is coming up, and of course they'll be on as usual from 8 o'clock until 10 o'clock. And I'll be back, uh, and so will Craig, during the Today Show with updates on how the storm is affecting us here in Louisville. Enjoy your Saturday. <laughs>